Former Attorney General Mohamed Adoke, who reportedly fled Nigeria in 2015 pending criminal charges, is back to Nigeria and is facing charges of abuse of office and money laundering. And the People's Democratic Party, PDP, has warned President Muhammad Buhari not to touch the 2.1 trillion naira pension fund to implement infrastructural projects. This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cohn. Nigeria's former Attorney General Mohamed Bailou Adoke has been arrested by the Interpol agents at the request of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, shortly after returning from Dubai. Now, the former Attorney General, as we all know, who is now in custody of the EFCC, is being accused of alleged abuse of office and money laundering in respect of granting the oil prospecting license uh, 245 Shell and ENI. And now it has been reported that a court has granted an application by the anti-graft agency um, to detain Adoke for 14 days. Joining us to have this conversation, because I'm not a lawyer, uh, I'm just, uh, you know, a layman. I have Obi Ajegwa, she's a legal practitioner, and also we have Olalekon um, Adigun. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Obi, you are a lawyer, so you'd, ex you'd be in better position to explain to us. So, Adoke was in custody while he was in Dubai. Mm -hmm. He was in custody, yes. Now, he decided to come home so he could face these charges, allegedly, um, that have been held against him. But now a court is saying he can be held. Explain to us how that works. First of all, before we go to this issue, we have to go from to the historical background. There is the issue of a case that he instituted against the Attorney General. And judgment was given on the, um, in 2018 by Honorable Justice Binta and Yako. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the trust of it is that if you are carrying out um, um, legal instructions given to you by somebody in authority and the person is, 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 um, is, uh, has the right to give you such orders and you carry out those orders, you cannot be held liable for anything. And that is in line with um, Section 45 of the Penal Code, which says the same thing. So that law is there as a side. Uh, okay. And then secondly, the issue of a court granting, normally our law is um, guilty until, um, innocent until to proving guilty. guilty. And for a court to now detain you for something that you've not been charged for, it's, 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 it's laughable. It's laughable. And I know his lawyers will go and um, go and challenge that expert motion. So you're telling me mm. that a court or that court that had granted mm. the EFCC custody of the former Attorney General for 14 days mm. is uh, running a against the law or it is not right? I'm trying to understand what you're saying. It, is, it, it, it runs foul of what we know as the tenets of criminal law. It runs far from my research and my understanding of the tenants of So what should be the case if, for example, I mean, the reason why he's here is to face those charges. Mm -hmm. He was in custody. What's the difference between him being in custody in Dubai and still being in custody here in Nigeria? Dubai is an issue of jurisdiction. Okay. It was, the crime was committed in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. But because of the convenience we have of Interpol, mm -hmm. that's why Dubai has kept them. And they, they cannot try him in Dubai because it's a Nigerian offense. It's, it, it's an offense committed it's in Nigeria. Nigerian Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So that's the difference. But I was, I was really taken back because they could have just charged him and then asked, requested for him to be put in their custody, and then they will now amend the charges and charge him again. That's, that would have been the cleaner way to go about it. So does this mean that Adoke's lawyer has a case to repeal or um, file a fresh suit against the EFCC? Adoke's lawyers have every right to go to court and get that expertise version cancelled. Okay. Let's talk about the... You and I are laymen. We do not know the jargons that lawyers throw around. But this is someone in connection to an oil scam, one of the biggest that Nigeria has ever witnessed. And 
the reactions from both sides saying he shouldn't be held until he's proven guilty. Why should he be in EFCC's custody? The other question is, whoever was in charge at the time that he was an attorney general should also be party in this case. And where are all the people who he took orders from? Well, uh, from what I know about the Malabu oil uh, deal, uh, it started uh, 2010 and uh, a lot of issues uh, were modeled up into, into it and now involving Shell and um, uh, ENI, and uh, uh, involving the deal. Now, the question we should be asking ourselves is why uh, this, kind, this degree of corruption? Because corruption is a very, very serious issue. I'm sure there are 1,001 answers to that question. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a serious issue in our national life. So we can't uh, just wave it off on the basis of legal technicalities and things like that. So this kind of money, I want to know the kind of, for example, a university was built, uh, was about to be built in uh, Katsina recently. Mm -hmm. I want to know how much of that money can be invested into that kind of a project rather than resorting to borrowing. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? So, the, and the issue of money laundering is another serious issue we should be looking at, involving a former Attorney General of the Federation, Chief Law Officer of the country, for that matter, involving in that degree, or being alleged to be involved in I was in that about to correct you that this is, these are all allegations. Yes, it's we, not been proven yet. It's not, be, it's not been proven yet, because we are talking about $1.3 bi uh, billion dollars, uh, in, in all. Uh, uh, and that's, a, that's also not, not, uh, that's not stating the fact of the, even the contract itself, because mm -hmm. we are just talking about the money that was involved in, in, in this case, we are talking, even talking about bribery, mm -hmm. the money that was laundered. Are you getting my point now? So all these issues are murky. We can't just look at them in, uh, uh, in isolation. We should look at them holistically. Mm. in terms of the impact they have on, the, on our national life. I mean, this is, this is one of the many uh, oil dramas or scandals that Nigeria has. I mean, as we speak, there's one hanging over our heads, the PNID. Yeah, and, and recently there was a, a court um, ruling that somebody should be extradited into Nigeria, one of the Britons who was, uh, you know. So we have all of these. It, it, it just, it's when it surfaces, then we say, oh, there's a lot of corruption. But there is still corruption deep-seated in this country. Whether we have proof or not, there is corruption going on in the country. But the ones that we find are the ones that we want to deal with. And you didn't ask my, answer my second question. I asked if, as they have said, allegedly, Adoke is somewhat involved in this, then it doesn't, it doesn't start and end with him, does it? It doesn't. Now, even the, uh, the con I was about to come, in, uh, come into that. Even the contract started with uh, Dana, 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 Dana Tete, Tete, the Minister for uh, Petroleum. It was, at the time. it was a court judgment that um, Adoke was handling. Handling. It, so it wasn't the real case. It wasn't the real case. Uh, we are talking about the one that even involved Adoke himself mm -hmm. now in this. So the money we are even talking about is not, ju it's not just Adoke now, because Adoke served as a minister, even under President Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that makes it even more political. That makes it even, that makes it thing even dirtier in, in this regard. That's why we have to be even be very, very careful. We, co we can't just look at Adoke acting alone now. He couldn't have collected that, the, that amount of money without a lot of people getting involved. Yeah, yeah, Obi, and, that, and, that, and that's why I'm saying this is what we're doing. We're digging deeper. Yes, uh, like I said, a lot of people are on different sides mm. complaining about how isolated this is when it is intertwined with several other. Some people are saying it's witch hunts, you know, because the main major issue has not necessarily been addressed in its entirety. I, I, I am. I agree with them. I'll tell you, in this case, there was, a, there was a, an exhibit attached to this case. I did not see the letter, but it was cited by the Honorable Justice. And, and it was a letter written by the current Attorney General, stating to the effect that, there, that there's not much evidence to, to use to prosecute this guy. So if a, a, an Attorney General, a sitting Attorney General, who is seized of all the facts, can now come out and say that, then why are you, why are you after this guy? And then secondly, I see, I see Adoke as just a pawn. 
I see it as they are, they're looking for somebody else, but they want to use Adoke to be able to attract the other person. What do you think Adoke knows that might be what the EFCC or the government of the day or our big wigs are using to fish for the major... Adoke is a son, first of all, and he's a lawyer. He will not go outside the purview of the case in question. Any questioning outside the purview of the case, I can bet you he will not answer it. They have to, they have to prove their facts. And from what I am seeing, they don't have any facts. They don't have anything. It's just a big fish. They just want to catch a big fish in, um, in the other, in Jonathan's regime to make a statement. That's the way I see all this. Is this really about the Jonathan regime or is there bigger, it's something bigger than the Jonathan regime? Well, uh, or oh, Jonathan administration. Uh, uh, Jonathan administration. Uh, <laughs> Jonathan stopped being president in 2015. So, mm -hmm. I, what I think is that Adoke, uh, being chief law officer at the time, probably knows a lot of things. And because of that, I guess the I'm just trying to think for the EFCC now. Things that okay, fine, let's get this guy. He knows, he was privy to most of the contracts. The, uh, um, uh, it's not just this uh, Malabu deal now. We're talking about the P&ID uh, &ID issue and a lot of things that they need to get facts for. Because currently, you don't forget, the P&ID issue is still, in the, is still in the UK undergoing trial. The Nigerian government really does not have the muscle to uh, prosecute the case, but they just want to try their best. So I think that the EFCC, they are just trying to play. Because for them to have... Insti for them to have uh, uh, gotten an extradition uh, uh, order for, to, uh, to uh, in, in, align, in, in alignment with Interpol, they must have, uh, they, they know something that probably we don't know. Are there no better ways? I mean, again, I don't know how the workings of lawyers, sands, and judges is, but because he sounds more like, you know, they, he has information that they need. Should, if it is about information, mm -hmm. What about the scandal that is, alleged scandal that is being attached to his name and with all of the um, media trials or... You see, first of I all... I mean, how do you, how do you remedy that in, at the end of, all, of the day? First of all, my grass with EFCC is when FBI is after you, you don't even know. They take their time, gather, even plant people close to you and they get their information. They get it so that when they catch you, you know you're in trouble. But EFCC, Bakaram, any small illusion, they go. And they malign somebody's name. I think it's time. If I was a doctor, if they, once this case is over, I will sue the federal government for about 10 or 20 billion to teach them a lesson that you, your security agencies should be able to do their work. You should do your work and stop maligning people's names. But this has happened so many times. There was a list when there was a, re a list that was released at some point. I think in 20, 2015, yes, 16. yes, 2016, maligning a lot of people who came out to say we had no business with whatever the EFCC. So, and a lot of them sued the EFCC, but nothing came out of it. So. But let's even look at it this way. Let's look at the Ibori case, for instance. When Ibori was in Nigeria, no court found him guilty until he went to London. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? He served his time in London before even coming back. He, as, it's, in Nigeria today, it's still innocent by based on Nigerian judicial standard. Do you understand what I'm trying? So we need to also look at all these And we talked about this yesterday and I kept asking if a court in the UK was able to find Ibori guilty, does it mean that we have incompetent intel intelligence officers in this country? Is there no sharing of information? Is there no synergy with us and the Interpol or the, the um MI6 in the UK. I mean, I'm just trying to understand how a man who is guilty abroad for a crime that was committed here and there is walking free in Nigeria. I'm just trying to understand, aside from the courts, because, I mean... Sorry, before I answer your question, he mentioned something. I want to shed light on it. The PID case is a case of crime. If the Nigerian government is serious that they want to do that thing, in England, you have a right to start a criminal prosecution as a private individual. They should go there, start, institute a criminal position, prosecution, bring the facts that there was fraud indeed, and table it. And when they get judgment, everything that has been gone against them will be squashed. Will be quashed. That's number one. Then number two, we, we, are, we are so back when we are, we're so um, 
back home in, oh, let's leave it for God. Ah, they, they start going to court because of, um, start taking pol um, federal government to court. Then every day, they'll start investigating me. They start monitoring me. They start doing that. But somebody has to bail the cow. Somebody has to do it. If you want changes, somebody has to do it. You cannot come and call me a liar and have me detained and then come back in Nigeria for a wishy-washy case. You must have an ironclad case. If not, when I come out of that, I will sue you and go to Hague and institute actions against Nigeria. Because it is wrong. The, our security agencies should, should do their facts. They should, they should do their homework, for God's sake, and stop maligning people, stop creating problems, and stop giving people a tag. Look at the judges that they, that they, that they uh, went to their house at midnight. How many of them have they found guilty? But now that toga will still be with that judge. Ah, that judge is this. But for all you know, maybe the judge is not that way. Now, this man obviously has medical reasons. That's why he went to Dubai. You brought him, you've disgraced him, and now what, have, what do you have? They have to, what we have to now is for the government to tell us, if I am a civil servant and my boss tells me, Obi, this is the, this is, this is the judgment, this is, we don't have money, but from this transaction, this is what is coming to Nigeria. Pay this, pay this, pay this, pay this. And the only way you can do it is through bank transfer. Now you have to tell me if, because I'm obeying my, my boss, according to section 45 of the penal code, that I would, that I'll be guilty, then I will now have to tell him, Oga President, please, can you sign an undertaking that you, that you're giving, can you put it down? But most times these things are out in, are, are written down. So I don't understand. That's the same case with Dasuki. That's why Dasuki is still there. Dasuki was giving money and he was following the instructions of payment. So they should draw a line between what you're doing in the course of your duty and what you're, what you're doing outside the course of your duty. Okay, so where do we see this uh, Adoke case going? We're not supposed to preempt the courts, but no. as she has said... Um, he's not supposed to be held. The, the processes are supposed to be the other way around. But, well, as we speak, he is in EFCC's custody. Mm -hmm. EFCC has also said that they have him. Yeah. How do we see this panning out with all of the drama that surrounds this case? Well, it's a, it's a typical Nigerian uh, corruption trial case. Uh, Ojo Zokalu recently uh, got a judgment. That is, Ojo Zokalu left, uh, stopped being governor of Abia State in 2007. Uh, the case, uh, also there's uh, the Nyako. These things take very, very long time. before. That's the, and that's another uh, uh, aspect of our criminal uh, trial that's, that's, that, that's, that I really don't, don't like. And so most of these things, before you know what is happening, a lot of sentiments begin to come in. A lot of, oh, it's, he's sick. You have people going to court in coffins, in... Uh, in, uh, in <laughs> <laughs> really? In, 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 in wheelchair, in, you know, and uh, look at the uh, Elizabeth case. Elizabeth, you know, you just come into court, come in, in uh, what's it called? This um, stretcher. Um, stretcher. Stretcher. And things like that. So, and before you know what is happening, it, uh, the, 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 the case begin, the, begins to get bad. You, the judgment, justice, the cost of justice, at the end of the day, we won't even get this money back. What do you think, as an, an honest Nigerian, I'm, begin, I'm believing that you're an honest Nigerian, <laughs> who wants to fight corruption, if we are really fighting mm -hmm. corruption, what things do you, or what loopholes do you think we need to plug in order for us to be able to get to the crux or the bottom of the matter and deal with it head on? I think we need the serious judicial reforms in this country. And I'm, I, I posted something on Twitter yesterday about the perpetual injunction given to uh, Peter Odili as former governor of uh, uh, River State. I, I still don't understand. I'm doing, I don't know whether my, my, my lawyer here can. I don't understand the you basis. You can put it to her. <laughs> of the judgment <laughs> still. To, you know, I don't understand the basis. I don't understand the legal basis. I've asked my lawyer friends. They just, all of them just keep keeping mom. So, uh, Abi, help us out here. How, how does not, a perpetual injunction I'm work? I'm not seized of the facts. I can only talk about something that I know. If I knew this was going to come up, I would have researched it and I would have been able to advise. Okay. But know that before a court will do that, the court has the integrity of the court at stake. So whatever they're doing, they are looking at the integrity of the court, looking at their own integrity as a judge, and looking at the hope and the faith of the common man before they give a judgment. 
Okay, interesting. Well, we have to go uh, for a short break, and when we come back, we will be talking about the opposition. The PDP seems to be awake from their slumber, and now they're asking the president not to use the pension funds to implement capital projects. Well, that's up next, right after this break. Stay with us.